Hello and welcome to a short and very interesting video. This video is about this little project here and uh, this is some sort of wireless power transfer like a uh, wireless mobile phone charger for example. Um, so this uh, project is uh, built with vacuum tubes only so there are no solid state components here and uh, in here and there is actually one vacuum tube as you can see and uh, not more this uh, tube contains two uh, triode system, uh, systems, it's the 6PQ7, so it has two triode systems and uh, this is a, tri a dual triode for uh, high frequency applications um, and I will show you shortly what this does in this circuit and uh, then we have this transmitter winding here and uh, this here is the receiver with this tuned circuit with this inductor and capacitor here and um, first of all I will turn it on to show you what it actually does so for for this um, I will turn on the filament and I will turn on the high voltage for this because this thing runs on high voltage it runs on 250 volts because it uses vacuum tube so if you try this at home uh, be very careful because it uses high voltages and uh, for the test I will turn off the light now okay so now you might be able to see things better and uh, now let me turn on uh, the high voltage so the high voltage is on now and uh, now I will turn on uh, the filament of the vacuum tube so this is also on and uh, now as you can see the tube uh, starts to glow and if we wait a bit and there we go now it's it's running now it's working and as you can see the LED here lights up and I, I can move this around and we have wireless uh, energy transfer going on here which is great so I can move it quite a bit around and it it works um, so uh, actually this circuit here creates a um, high frequency signal which then couples into this inductor here this inductor creates a magnetic field and this magnetic field couples into this uh, tuned circuit here and th this then will uh, light up the LED and uh, there's one interesting thing uh, which uh, you can notice uh, since the field lines uh, are going around the wire in that way um, if I turn the receiver like this then it will go black then it will go uh, go dim and if I turn it in that way so that the field lines can couple into the receiving inductor then it will light up bright so now it's off and now it's on so this is something very interesting which we can notice here and which we can explore so if I turn it even if I'm very near at the copper wire you can see it's off and if I turn it now it's on so it does not depend so much on its position in here it is mostly dependent on the direction in which I am holding it okay so as you can see this works pretty well this works great okay um, and uh, yeah so let me show you uh, so next let me show you the circuit of this thing and explain a little bit how it actually works Circuit time yay, so here we're looking at the circuit diagram of the thing It uses the 6PQ7 and the 6PQ7 has two triad systems in it So uh, these are both triad systems of the 6PQ7 So you need only one tube because it has two triad systems in it and it consists of two main parts and the first part is the oscillator and uh, the second part is the output stage so first let's start with the oscillator so this is the oscillator and what does the oscillator need to oscillate it needs an amplifier which, which has a gain of uh, one or more than one and um, it needs to have some sort of feedback and this feedback needs to be regenerative not degenerative it needs to be regenerative it needs to regenerate itself and this is possible if the loop gain of this thing uh, has no phase shift okay so if the whole loop uh, has zero phase shift because then it uh, can regenerate itself if, if it would have 180 degree phase shift then it would be degenerative and it would kill the oscillation this is what we don't want we want it to oscillate okay but how do we do that um, so we need also some uh, phase selective thing in the feedback network because uh, at a certain frequency it should oscillate and this would is, is the frequency at which it has zero phase shift okay so we need something in the feedback network which has a zero phase shift at a certain frequency okay so 
the feedback ne network is this thing here and this is this LC circuit here. And as you might know, an LC circuit has zero degree phase shift at its resonance frequency. So you can compute the resonance frequency of this using the Thomson formula. And uh, then you get zero uh, degree phase shift at a certain frequency. And this will be the frequency of oscillation. But there's a problem here. Since we're using this vacuum tube in this configuration, we have a phase shift from here to here, from the grid to the anode uh, of 180 degree. So this has 180 degree phase shift and this is a problem because uh, if we have 180 degree phase shift, how can this oscillate? And the solution for this is the transformer here. The cool thing about the transformer is that it can have a zero degree phase shift, but it can also have 180 degree phase shift. Depending on how you connect the output of the transformer, depending on how uh, you connect it, you can get zero or 180 degree phase shift. And the clue with this circuit is that uh, the transformer here introduces this phase shift of 180 degree. This has zero degree phase shift as at resonance and the tube itself is also 180 degree. So the complete loop then therefore has zero degree phase shift and this is the frequency of oscillation of this uh, uh, oscillator. So if this um, LC circuit is at resonance, we have zero degree phase shift on the whole thing and it will uh, oscillate at the resonance frequency of this LC circuit. So this is a cool solution for that. And if this thing is not oscillating, a very common error is that uh, just the transformer is reversed. So then you have to reverse one side of the transformer and then it will start oscillating. Okay, so how is the DC uh, bias point of this thing? How to set the DC bias point? It's very simple because um, here I've connected ground, okay? And since an inductor is a short for DC, uh, this, this grid is on DC ground. So for AC it's not on ground, but for DC it's on ground. Therefore we have ground reference here and we have this resistor down here. Uh, uh, on this resistor there will be a certain voltage drop depending on the current. Okay, so as you can see, since we have a positive voltage across here and zero volts here, the grid will be negative with respect to cathode because more voltage here and zero here gives you negative on the grid and therefore you can set the bias current according to the data sheet of the 6BQ7. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, here we have the output stage and it's coupled to the grid of the oscillator. So I, I use uh, this as the output of the oscillator and I couple it to the grid here. And also this resistor is here to set the bias point and uh, since the grid here is also to ground it works the same way but we have a, uh, a capacitor across this resistor because actually this uh, resistor gives you degenerative feedback which reduces the gain and this is something that we don't want in the output stage. For the oscillator this thing has enough gain but I want to get more gain out of it for the output stage and therefore I, uh, sh I, I put this capacitor across. So if I would have put the capacitor across here then this oscillator would have gotten more gain. Okay. Um, so uh, how does is, is this output here working? The output is pretty simple. At the anode we have this tuned circuit consisting of this capacitor and this inductor here and uh, then uh, this, this tuned circuit is actually this inductor is uh, the big, uh, the big uh, inductor, the big primary uh, wire and then we have this capacitor here and this is also tuned to the same resonance frequency of course and then the secondary of the transformer is uh, just uh, this uh, LC circuit with the LED connected so this is the inductor and the capacitor connected to the LED. And this is how the whole thing works. It's uh, actually very simple. There is of course room to improvement and I will improve it. Um, and I also have plans for it. Um, but uh, it already works uh, quite well. And yeah, so that's for the circuit explanation. And now let's uh, have a look uh, at the oscilloscope. Let's look at the oscillator. So I will connect the oscilloscope here to the secondary of the transformer, the grid here. And uh, of course I will ground the oscilloscope, so I will connect the other side to ground. And uh, we will have a look at the oscillation of this oscill oscillator. So uh, let's have a look how beautiful it oscillates. Okay, so here we're looking at the oscilloscope screen. And uh, the oscilloscope is now in DC coupling, but uh, as I have explained you before, this point uh, should be at uh, zero volts, this should be at ground reference, so therefore I expect no DC offset uh, on this. And uh, now the very interesting moment uh, comes to see how this uh, oscillation actually looks like. Is it a clean sine wave? Is it a 
a distorted waveform. I think it's a clean sine wave and uh, we will uh, see it shortly. So first of all I will turn on the high voltage. So the high voltage is on and now I turn on the heater and let's wait a little bit until uh, the tube uh, starts to glow and it does and now we should the, the oscillation should kick in and there it is and as you can see we have a beautiful sine wave oscillation this is this is just just great this is just what we would have expected a clean sine wave and yeah this this is this is it this is this is how it should be actually so that's for this okay so here we are back at, at the thing and as you can see it's still working pretty good if i turn it it goes off and now it's on again so i can switch it on and off by turning it okay so this works as expected and uh, one safety note here we are working with 250 volts so this is a very high voltage so if you uh, build this so be very very careful it's very dangerous and uh, we are using a mild copper wire here of course for the inductor so this is a mild copper wire and this is a mild so it's isolated but again be very careful if it's damaged or so and um, this thing by the way is at high voltage this is at 250 volts this uh, inductor here so it can be very very dangerous so be sure um, that you don't touch anything and be very careful and if you're not sure then don't build it and yeah but as you can see it's working as it should and maybe i will improve it a bit more but this uh, concludes this video for now and i hope you have enjoyed it and learned a thing or two and i can say thanks for watching and bye